the dormition of the Theotokos, or the falling asleep of the Theotokos, an ever-Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. It is not uh, an easy task uh, for anyone to describe the glory of the Mother of God. It is also extremely difficult uh, to put into words the virtues and holiness of the living temple of God, namely the Theotokos and of a Virgin Mary. Now let us uh, investigate what the Bible says concerning the Theotokos. In the book of Genesis, uh, God promised Adam and Eve that uh, from a virgin the Savior of mankind shall be born. When he says uh, to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art uh, cursed above all cattle and all the brutus of the earth. And thy breast and belly thou shalt go, and thou shalt eat earth all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall watch against thy head, and thou shalt watch against his heel. Genesis 3, verses 15 to 16. This promise is called the Proto-Evangelio, the first good news, because it is the first message that God gave man concerning the salvation of mankind. The virgin will give birth without having a relationship with man, and the child will crush the head of the invisible enemy, namely Satan. The image of the heel is used by God to prophesy the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord. In the book of Daniel, we have the prophecy concerning the seedless or immaculate conception of Christ. Whereas thou sawest that a stone was cut out of a mountain without hands, and it it, it beat it to pieces the earthen where the iron, the brass, the silver, the gold. The great God has made known to the king what must happen hereafter. And the dream is true and the interpretation thereof sure. Daniel chapter 2 verse 45. The most significant prophecies concerning the birth of our Savior in uh, Jesus Christ are made by the prophet Isaiah, who says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive in, in the womb, and shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. In the Old Testament, the patriarch Jacob sees uh, in his dream a heavenly ladder, which connected heaven and earth, with the angels of God ascending and descending this ladder. The fathers of the Orthodox Church sees this ladder as the prophecy of the Virgin Mary, which uh, through her connects a man to God. Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. When uh, Moses finds himself in front of the flaming bush, uh, which was not consumed by the fire on Mount Sinai. The fact that the Virgin Mary and ever Virgin uh, Theotokos was uh, to receive in her womb all the divine nature of God the Logos and that she was to remain a virgin are prophesied. The parents of the Theotokos were Ioachim and Anna. They were unable to have children because Anna was sterile but they never ever stopped uh, uh, praying and believing that God will grant them a child. The yearning of a, for a child in faith of Saint Anna was a very great and for this reason God sent his angel at the time when Saint Anna was praying in her garden to announce the joyful news that uh, she was to have a child. According to holy tradition, the trees and plants bowed down when the holy angel appeared. The Theotokos was not immaculately conceived. The teachings of the Roman Catholic Church about the Theotokos is wrong. 
because the Theotokos was conceived in a normal human way, and so she was born with the original sin. The entire life of the Virgin Mary was spotless and holy. When she was three years old, when uh, she, her parents presented it and dedicated her to God in the temple in Jerusalem, where she remained in uh, the Holy of Holies until she was 12 years old. According to holy tradition, the Theotokos spent all her time in this Holy of Holies praying and reading the Holy Scriptures, fasting. An angel of God was feeding her daily during this period. The ever-Virgin Mary became worthy to become the Mother of God, the Logos, not only because uh, this was prophesied in the Old Testament, but because she herself was struggling for sanctification. God, knowing before all ages her, her purity, chose her to become uh, the Mother of His only begotten Son. The Theotokos uh, and ever Virgin Mary was cleansed from original sin at the time of her Annunciation by the Archangel Gabriel and the descending and overshadowing uh, of the Holy Spirit and Almighty God upon her. When the Virgin Mary accepted of her own free will to bear the Logos, the Holy Spirit cleansed her soul from the guiltiness of the original sin. According to the words of the Archangel Gabriel when he says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. From that moment, God the Logos was incarnated in the womb of the Virgin Mary the Theotokos. Because she was sanctified, the Virgin Mary was now incapable of sinning, regardless of her own free will. Further, just as man fell and died through a virgin who disobeyed, he was uh, revived to new, a new life through the Virgin Mary, who was obedient to the Word of God. According to the Orthodox Church, the Theotokos was a virgin before she gave birth, when she was bringing Christ into the world, and after the birth she remains a virgin forever. For this reason, in Orthodox iconography, three stars are placed on the Theotokos, one on each of the shoulders and the third on the forehead. By these stars is expressed the orthodox doctrine concerning the virginity of the Theotokos. It is a blasphemous uh, for anyone uh, to uh, say that uh, the Theotokos had other children with Saint Joseph. These blasphemies uh, come from impious heretics. Saint Joseph the protector of the Theotokos was a widower and was married before and had six children, four boys, namely James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, as well as two daughters, as this is witnessed in the, the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 55 to 56. Every time there is mention of the brothers of Christ in the New Testament, they are referred to as the children of Joseph and not married. Matthew chapter 12 verse 46 to 47, Mark chapter 3 verses 31 to 32, Luke chapter 8 verse 19 to 20. Matthew 13 verse 55 to 56, Mark chapter 6, verse 3, John chapter 6, verse 42, uh, John chapter 2, verse 23, John chapter 7, verse 21, in the book of Acts 1, verse uh, 14, in the first Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, in uh, the letter of Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. 
When the ever Virgin Mary greeted her cousin Elizabeth, when she visited her, Elizabeth exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Luke chapter 1, verses 42 to 43. The ever Virgin Mary replies, prophesying, For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, verse 48. Why would a God choose uh, Mary to become the mother of his only begotten son? The answer lies in Mary's humility. As she herself says, For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Cha Luke, chapter 1, verse 48. The extreme humility of the virgin was the cause of this cho choice of God, and not wealth, education, or beauty. God is not touched by any of these qualities, but only by the virtue of humility. The ever-Virgin Mary and Theotokos, for the love of the salvation of mankind, humbled herself to become and accepted to become the mother of God. The ever-Virgin Mary is the most silent person in the New Testament. Apart from the Annunciation of the birth of Christ and the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord, the Theotokos does not appear anywhere else, and this because of her extreme humility. Only from such a humble person could God, who is the fountain of all humility, can be born. The ever-Virgin Mary knew perfectly well whom she gave birth to, but she always remained humble. She never separated herself from the other women. When the church was established, she never asked for a, or received any commands from her son, Jesus Christ. She... Uh, although above the apostles never appeared preaching in the church either the Virgin Mary will always remain an eternal example for all women to imitate in other words a perfect mother in a perfect virgin Saint John Chrysostom says, says that a woman who want to become priests have a satanic pride and ego and this because they place themselves above the mother of God and ever Virgin Mary. And it must be remembered that she never became a priest herself. The role of women in the Christian family is to give to the church their children to, so that these children can become saints. Therefore, it is a very important for mothers to see that it is uh, their responsibilities to bring their children to the church and to Sunday school every single Sunday and not to leave them at home to sleep or find excuses not to go to church. We must never forget that one day all of us will appear before the awesome judgment seat of God. On earth we can easily find many excuses to give to the priest why we do not come to church. But what excuse can the parents find to give to God? To have the children become saints in after all the ultimate purpose of marriage and thusly the Holy Trinity is glorified. Because of the prophecy of the Virgin Mary that she will be blessed unto all the ages of ages. She was blessed from the apostolic era and until today no other woman was blessed more than her. The Orthodox Church of Christ, continuing the apostolic holy tradition, honors the Theotokos as the mother of God and as the Church's own mother. We call her Theotokos, which means the mother of God, because she did not give birth to a normal man, but to the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, namely God the Logos. The Orthodox Church does not uh, worship the Theotokos, because uh, we worship only the Holy Trinity. 
the Theotokos is honored by us, and we love her more than all the saints and angels. St. John of Damascus teaches us the following. Moreover, we proclaim the Holy Virgin to be in strict truth the Mother of God, for inasmuch as he who was born of her was true God, she who bare the true God incarnate is the true Mother of God. For we hold that God was born of her, not implying that the divinity of the Word received from her the beginning of its being, but meaning that God the Word himself, who was begotten of the Father timelessly before the ages, and was with the Father and the Spirit without beginning and through eternity, took up his abode in these last days for the sake of our salvation in the virgin's womb, and was without chance, change, uh, made flesh and born of her. For the Holy Virgin did not bear mere man, but true God, and not mere God, but God incarnate, who did not uh, bring uh, down his body from heaven, nor simply pass through the Virgin as a channel, but received from her flesh of like essence to our own and substance in her himself. For if the body had come down from heaven and had not a partake of our nature, what would have been uh, uh, the use of his becoming man? For the purpose of God, the word becoming man was that the very same nature which had a sinned and fallen and became corrupted should triumph over the deceiving tyrant and so be freed from corruption, just as the divine apostle puts it. For since by man came a death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. If the first is true, the second must also be true. Hence, it is uh, with justice and truth uh, that we call the Holy Mary the Mother of God, for this name embraces the whole mystery of the dispensation. For if uh, she who bore him is the Mother of God, assuredly uh, he who was born of her is God, and uh, likewise also man. For how could a uh, God who was before the ages have been born of a woman unless he had become man? For the Son of Man must clearly be man himself. But if he who was born of a woman is himself God, manifestly he who was born of God the Father in accordance with the laws of an essence that is divine and knows no beginning, he who was in the last days born of the Virgin, in accordance with the laws of an essence that has beginning and is subject to time, that is an essence which is human, must be one and the same. The name in truth signifies the one substance and the two natures, and the two generations of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we never say that the Holy Virgin is the Christotokos, Christ-bearing, uh, with which means Mother of Christ, because uh, it was in order to do away with the title Theotokos, Mother of God, and to bring uh, dishonor on the Mother of God, who alone is in truth worthy of honor, above all creation, all of these are the saints of St. John of Damascus. St. Irenaeus also proclaimed, if, any reject, if anyone rejects his birth, Christ's birth, from a virgin, how can he accept his uh, resurrection from the dead? The Virgin Mary, as the mother of the true God, is able to intercede for her son, to her son, for the salvation of the world, but he who saves is Christ himself. 
the Orthodox Church asks and beseech the ever-Virgin Mary to intercede for the enlightenment and the salvation of all mankind. As every mother prays for the benefit of her children, in the same manner the Theotokos prays for all Orthodox Christians and gives to them according to their needs. Amen.